So we're standing part of the paddock where there's a bit of a drainage line, but it's a bit more ground cover vegetation. And because of the fire was a little bit hotter here, it actually got to the point where it actually killed some of those poa tussocks. That's a native tussock. And you can see here that those tussocks have, have died off and haven't come back. And there's a little bit of broadleaf weed and there's a little bit of annual grasses which have come through. So a bit weedy in this area as well. Something to watch out for is uh, what are those other species that come back um, after there's been some space because those plants have died off. So this is a native naturalised uh, pasture. You can see here this is uh, kangaroo grass. Um, it is a, a warm season uh, perennial. So as a, a native, it's um, got some, some really nice um, attributes to it. Uh, in, in this situation, after the fire, uh, where it was potentially a, a bit more tussocky, it's actually come back quite spindly. But over time and with rest, this species will thicken up as well. One of the other species that we have in this native pasture is Microlina, or weeping rice grass, with that very um, distinct weeping seed head. It actually is a, what we call a year-long green, so it's here all year round, and it has ability to put out feed all year round, so very good quality feed. It, um, it has structures that actually um, allow it to be uh, grazed very hard, but also um, uh, where it runs across the, the, the top of the the ground but also underneath what we call rhizomes and so it actually has the ability to uh, withstand a little bit of fire and come back from fire. So it's actually a really good species, colonising species that is good for our livestock but also for good for ground cover as well. And the, uh, one of the identification features is that, that weeping seed head that happens in autumn but also in spring but also um, at the top of the tip of the, the plant there's a little bit of a notch and that little bit of a notch can give it away without that seed head. One of the things that uh, we need to assess um, after a fire and after a bit of a rest period as well is what other species have come through. So not only the ones that are potentially very uh, useful but also the ones that might be a weed. So in, in this case looking at things like serrated tussock um, and you know, the serrated tussock is a little bit hard to see when you've got lots of grass um, around it, but certainly serrated tussock is one of those introduced species that um, will has the ability to, to utilise that bare ground after a bushfire, and come through and germinate and become a bit of a, a monoculture and use that space that's occurred because of the event and start to uh, proliferate. There's other species um, that are also concerned, some of our annual species, just the things like um, vulpia or silvergrass or rat's tail fescue. Those are all species that really like that kind of bit of bare ground to proliferate, to germinate and to do their thing, which is you know, spread lots of seed and, and take over areas. So after a bushfire, it's very important to go and have a look at what weeds there might be and get those things that you're not quite sure what they might be identified.